Okay, this is unit three, assignment two. Your worksheet probably doesn't have this on it, so I'm going to skip that. So you have some graphs, um, and then you're answering a few questions on each of them. So start with a basic graph. Uh, general exponentials look like this. And this doesn't have any changes to it, so that'll be our final answer. I do want the horizontal asymptote drawn and labeled. I want the y-intercept labeled. This is increasing. This is concave up. It's, it says increasing, decreasing, sketch, concave up, determine the equation, the asymptote. We'll do range also, just like we're doing in class. And then asymptote, which is y equals zero. So that's what we need. Number seven, I find it easier to rewrite these like this, but it's up to you. So if we do it like that, then we graph the parent function two to the x, and then the negative flips it. And that's your final answer. And it is decreasing, concave up. Its range is zero to infinity. And its asymptote is y equals zero. So need that for each of these. Okay, next one. Next one has a little more. So, um, so we're going to graph parent function. This is what we did with trig. Horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Looks like that, y dash line. E still has the same y or so. You can do the two and then the negative, or you can do the negative two together if you do the two then makes it makes all the y values double and that's the main y value and then the negative flips it so that's going to be your final graph darken it in arrows on the ends this is decreasing Concave down, range is negative infinity to zero, and its asymptote is y equals zero. So I do need you to uh, label the asymptote, label that y-intercept also, and you see that on your graph, the dot and the coordinates. Okay, next one. So these are just like last chapter. Starting with the parent graph. Y dash line. Okay, the three multiplies all the y values by three, so now you're at zero, three. Okay, plus one moves everything up one. So now you're at zero, four. But your y, your asymptote shifts up one. So something like that. Darken it in, arrows on the ends. This is increasing, concave up. Range 
is one to pause infinity asymptote is y equals one. You need the y equals it's horizontal one. There you go. So got a few more. So parent function, horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, labeled, y-intercept labeled. That's y equals three, y equals three to the x. The negative on the inside flips it left to right. Negative on the outside flips it up to down. So there you go, increasing, concave down, range is negative infinity to zero, asymptote is y equals zero. Okay, you guys getting the hang of it? Next one. So we're doing the same kind of stuff we we're doing last chapter. Parent function, this is the one difference is that first graph we start with, it's a different shape. It's a parent function. The four multiplies all the values, y values by four. And the main one we're keeping track of is that y intercept. And then the minus two moves everything down to. So y equals negative two is new. And then this is zero two is a new y intercept. I don't care about the x intercept. Just keep track of that y intercept. So there's your graph. It is Increasing, concave up, range is negative two to positive infinity, asymptote, is y plus negative two. All right, let's see, next one. Now, let's see. Parent function. Okay. That's pretty much y equals 5 to the x. The plus 1 on the inside moves it left one point. Now, it's not a y intercept anymore, but I do want you to keep track of it. So it's at negative 1, 1. That's the point I want you to keep track of. I don't need the new y intercept. It's messy. And then the minus 3 is going to move everything down 3. So we can keep track of what was the original y-intercept. It is now negative 1, negative 3, or negative 2. Asymptotes at y equals negative 3. So it is increasing, concave up, range is negative three to positive infinity, and the asymptote is y equals negative three. There we go. Sorry, 
if I sound very relaxed, but I feel like I feel like these aren't super exciting. You guys should find these to be pretty easy, hopefully. All right. So we're gonna start with the parent function, like always. Y equals two to the X is like that. The negative on the inside flips it left to right, like that. The negative on the outside flips it upside down, like that. The plus one moves everything up one. So something like that. Keep track of that original y-intercept is now at zero zero, so it is increasing. Concave down. Range is negative infinity to one. Asymptote is y equals one. So here we go. You guys should be pretty good at graphing now, hopefully. Uh, 14, 15, we did together in class in our notes. Uh, so we should have tried 16, 18, uh, 16, 17, 18. We can make both bases the same. Well, you could say this is e to the 3x minus 1, and you can say this is e to the 0. Set the exponents equal to each other. And solve. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Uh, this is 2 to the 3rd. This is 2 to the 4th would be 16 fifth. So 2 to the 3x squared equals 2 to the 5th. So 3x squared equals 5. So x squared equals 5 thirds. Square root of both sides, plus or minus, plus or minus, two answers. x equals plus or minus root 15 over 3. Two answers. Need them both. This is 2 to the negative 1. This is 2 to the 3rd. So 2 to the negative 4x equals 2 to the negative 6x plus 3. Set the exponents equal to each other. x equals 3 halves. So that's how you solve exponential equations without a calculator. All right, a couple of word problems. Find the projected population AG in 20 years at a 2% annual growth rate and current population is 16,000. So this is your K value. This is your time. This is your current population, y sub zero. So the equation, you could just use it as y equals y sub naught e to the uh, e to the kt. So for us, we're gonna say y equals 16,000 e to the 0 0.02 times t, which is 20. So, you know, the answer is 16,000 e to the 0 0.04 on your calculator it's 23869.195 people but you can't have part of a person okay whatever but did it say to around the nearest person no so don't do it three decimal series okay so um find the annual growth rate so we're trying to find k for a town who doubled its population in eight years. This is called doubling time. So what we could say is, we don't know how much it was initially or how much it is now, but whatever it started with, we have double that now, right? E to that, and it took eight years to happen. And we, we're trying to find K. So we're gonna divide both sides by, why not? 2e to the uh, 2 equals e to the 8k. Now, this is where we would use natural laws. Natural log of 2. We can't make those bases the same like we were doing on the problems up above. 
So 8k equals natural log of 2, k equals natural log of 2 divided by 8, and on your calculator it's 0 0.086643, or 0, or then 8.664%. So, something like that. 21, uh, 1986, a new car averaged $9,000. 1991, new car averaged $12,000. Using, using an exponential model, predict the cost of a new car in 2015. So, we know how much it costs in 1991. And we'll say it started at 9,986. And it's e to the k times, you know how many years have passed, five years have passed. So you can use the two known values to figure out what k is. So we divide by 9,000. And we get 4 thirds. And we take the natural log of both sides. And we solve for k. So that's the k value. You write as a decimal if you want 0 0.057536414. Then we're going to use this. Now we could say we could start at 9,000, 1986. We start in 1991 at 12,000. Doesn't matter. You just need to. And I'm going to go ahead and use this exact value right here. Just why not? The time depends on what your your year one value is. So if we're using 9,000 from 1986, then this is going to be 29 years to 2015. If you use the 1991 value, then you're going to add 24 for your years. So either way, but you get 4,000, 47,740.524. Oh, three. So 47,740 point five two four dollars would be the units, right? Three decimal accuracy. What's the rule of 70? Well, it's a, uh, it's a rule for doubling time. It's a rough rule for doubling time. In fact, you guys might've learned it in a science class or something like that, or and it's this idea that doubling time is when the population doubles. You divide y sub zero at both sides, take the natural log of all sides, and t equals natural log of two over k. So your doubling time. And natural log of two is uh, 0 0.69. Three one four seven. It's about seventy. Now that would be sorry. If you treated K like a percent, then you multiply top and bottom by hundred, and it's about seventy over K as a percent. So that's where the rule of